Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, good afternoon guys it's Mike and I got a fresh fresh movie review for you guys right here now I am sitting just outside of Universal Studios Hollywood today is Friday June 17th 2022 and I just got done going to see the brand new Disney Pixar spin-off movie Lightyear this is of course based off of the character Buzz Lightyear that's been made famous in the four legacy Toy Story films as well as the spin-off movie from 2000 and unlike having Tim Allen doing the voice this time we have Chris Evans doing the voice of Buzz Lightyear the film also features the voice talents of Uzo Aduba Kiki Palmer and Isaiah Whitlock Jr. and of course as if I could ever forget Taika Waititi and the thing is there's not really much to go into about the plot I mean it's kind of simple I'll, I'll, I'll just give it to you thumbnail Buzz Lightyear is on a mission, and while he's on this mission, he's got to leave this planet with his crew. He becomes a bit too overzealous, and they get marooned on this planet. When they get marooned on this planet, they have to find a way to get off of it, and it turns out people have actually learned, while being stranded there, to use whatever intelligence and resources they have to make it habitable, while also Buzz trying to complete his mission because it's what he feels he has to do and things just kind of happen along the way and I don't want to ruin the movie but I'll say this much I don't understand the negative ratings that the film is getting this film is beyond polarizing with the ratings that it has it currently has a 77 percent considered certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics it has an 88% certified fresh rating from the audience on Rotten Tomatoes. But on IMDb, it has a 4.7. And it has endless negative reviews, negative remarks, and I can't understand for the life of me why. I, I can't figure it out. A lot of people are saying this movie does not deserve the title of a Pixar movie. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be off-put. This is a minor spoiler, but I promise it doesn't really affect anything. One of the characters in the film is a lesbian, and the film casually, thankfully, just treats it like it's any normal boy-girl relationship, and it's only referenced within the first 10 minutes of the movie in small increments. It, it doesn't it's not integral. It just is what it is. And I like the fact that a movie isn't trying to make any form of homosexuality a problem or a, a head scratcher. You know, like it's treated like any sort of normalcy, which is what I feel is how these sort of things should be. Because it is a form of normalcy. I mean, there's all sorts of people on this earth. You like who you like. You love who you love. It's not a choice. It's what you were born to do. You may choose to follow that, as you know some people have said, but no matter what, you are what you are. Love the skin you're in. It's how you were born. You are destined to come to that place in your life. And to quote my favorite quote of all time, and it's actually on the attraction, Splash Mountain, you cannot run from the truth. There ain't no place that far. Now, back to the movie itself, I found it to be very refreshing, it was fun, engaging, it runs at 100 minutes, well, uh, maybe 92 minutes if you take off the 8 minutes credits. And by the way, there are three post-credit scenes. There's one after the primary credits, you know, the uh, like the cast credits, and then after the crawling credits there's yet another one and there's a third one that i barely barely missed out on because thankfully someone told me even after the disney logo and the jumping luxo lamp pixar thing 
there's still something else and it's very important. So do not leave the theater until the lights turn on and the ushers come on in. There is three post credit scenes in this film. So stick around because that third one is actually important. But uh, other than that, the visuals were great. The action was good. There's not a boring scene to be had. It's not the most original movie you will ever see. I guess that's probably part of the reason people are giving it such bad press. But it's a fun, engaging popcorn movie. We are less than a week away from summer, and this movie has come out at the right time. It is a an just entertaining film. Nobody was bored by it. I can definitely see the Sox Cat being a big form of merchandise. People cheered at the end of the movie. They laughed all the way through it. It had some good emotional beats, particularly in the first act. Again, it's not going to change your life. It's not going to turn heads. It's not even going to really add to the mythos of Toy Story itself. It just is exactly what it is. It's a certified spinoff, but it's entertaining, engaging, short, sweet, fun, chef's kiss. I enjoyed it, and I think you guys will too. And now it's on to the rating. I'm going to give a rating of A for the new light year. I think A is just fine. A plus, not necessarily because it's not above anything and it's not too original, but I'm not going to give it a minus either. I think a solid A for effort is just fine, and I thought this film was as well. And finally, for the technical notes, see this in IMAX. Do not see it in Dolby. I know it's got the recliner chairs, but do not see it in Dolby. Do not see it in standard, and don't even regularly, I mean, don't even see it in 3D, I mean. See this in IMAX. If you've got an IMAX laser theater, that's preferable because this is the first Disney Pixar film, in fact, any animation film, to have a 1.43 IMAX ratio. Huge floor to ceiling, just like how Dune and Eternals was and uh, No Time to Die and the Dark Knight uh, sequels. Yeah, this has roughly... I'd say 45 minutes of it is in IMAX, particularly the space sequences, and then it drops back to those big black bars. But it's got good transitions where the bars slowly go away and we get the vastness of space. It really adds to the film. So it is a must, must, must. You must see this in IMAX. You have to see it. There's no other way. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching my review of Lightyear. If you'll excuse me, I have an audition to get to for Halloween Horror Nights, so wish me luck, you guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my review today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tick the bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload a video, which is almost daily at this point. You guys take care, be well, and I'll see you at the movies. Talk to you soon. Bye now.